So it's July 27th and it's uh, 2024. The beavers are still here. How you can tell the beavers are still around or in the pond is uh, simply because of the watercolor. The watercolor is very, um, it's opaque. In other words, it's it's got a lot of uh, silt in it. And that's from the beavers swimming around. And the dam is being worked on all the time. Anyway, I'm going to head out there and see just what's happening. See where their lodge is. And um, let's go discover a few things, eh? Canoe set to go. So this is just a small pond in front of my own house and um, I'm in my old my old fiberglass clunker of a canoe. I call it the muskrat but um, I just want to go and check this out. I want to see what these beavers have been up to. It's a Sunday so the road's going to be relatively busy. I abut the road obviously but um, anyway. So as you can see in the distance there, there's that's the dam. And the dam spans approximately 150 to 200 feet. And uh, one of the ways you can tell that a, a pond is occupied is simply because of the mud that's on the dam. If the beavers move out, that mud quickly sloughs off and yeah, you'll see the sticks that are the foundation of the dam. But um, Anyway, we'll paddle the whole length of it and see what's going on. These ponds, by the way, bring in so much wildlife. You wouldn't believe the number of deer and bear and... Well, I saw one bear. That's not a lot, but I saw one bear and... Oh my God, all the animals that are in here, it's just amazing. Just because of this pond. This dam is approximately six feet in height. Roughly. You can see how they've mudded it all up, eh? Every night they come out and they redo the mud. Every night. It's quite fascinating. Now we're coming up to a spot where there's very few pond lilies. One of their... This one's a little perplexing because their lodge, I believe, is in this corner of the pond. But they're starting to build a second lodge, which I've never seen happen before. But I'm going to try to investigate that and see what's going on. Right over there, right over there where that tree has come down, they're in amongst that tree. Now this paddling could bring them out. In fact, it probably will. Right in there. As I believe, that's their first, that's their original lodge when they first moved in here in the spring. Beavers excavate the depth of the pond um, to get the mud that they need for their dam and for their lodge. Right where I'm paddling now, it's right against the shoreline, but it's still over four feet deep. Now the reason for that is because beavers do not hibernate. They are up all winter long. They live under the ice. And when the ice freezes, obviously, oh, when the ice freezes, that's stupid. When the water freezes, the uh, beavers can swim around uh, in their pond, not, not molested by anything, like literally, except otters. But otters won't take on a full beaver. But um, so that's why the pond depth has to be at least four feet deep. I spotted a family of mergens or ducks in here, so or gansers, they're neat. Now you'll notice spots when you're paddling, you'll notice spots like this when you're on ponds or lakes. And uh, this is where the beavers have created channel ways to get onto shore. And there's a nice little pocket way deep in here. Where they've definitely be coming, they've been uh, coming up onshore to take care of things in there. You now, taking care of things means beavers have a gland in their uh, 
in their nether region, so to speak, their anus area, and it's a uh, an oil gland. So the beavers will spend at least 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes a day, if not more, spreading this oil all over and through their fur. And that's one of the spots they do it, is right in places like this. They sit on shore to do it. They'll sit on their tail. It's quite fascinating to watch. But, so you'll notice the proliferation of uh, plant material that's in this pond. Pond lilies, etc., etc. And uh, it creates a an amazing ecosystem. Now, here's what's cool. We're coming up to an old lodge. This lodge was used about six years ago. But if you notice, there's no lilies in front of it. None whatsoever. This is leading me to believe, right here, it leads me to believe that the beavers are starting to use this old lodge. I believe they are, but there's new mud and grass on that lodge that the beavers have pulled up and plastered it. Their entrance hole is under. It's under the, under the water, about roughly a foot, foot and a half down. So I believe, I, I truly believe this is gonna be their winter home. I think so. If they survive, you know, you never know with the roads, crews, and stuff coming by. But, um, yeah. And you can see where they've gone on shore there. Beavers are a fascinating animal, man. Absolutely fascinating. Without them, we wouldn't have the waterways we've got in Ontario, let alone Canada. So, oh, there's a baby turtle. Right here. Right there. Little guy. I won't bug him. A little painted. Yeah, let's just paddle upstream. There's some more inlets that the beavers have cut to get onto shore. So they're getting ready to do their fall cutting. What they'll do is they'll go into the bush and they'll take down the um, saplings, etc., etc., and they'll build a raft. Literally, it's like a huge raft of food supply. They eat the cambium layer of the of the uh, bark. So they will um, they'll store that underwater uh, for the uh, for the winter time. It'll freeze in, and they've got like a yeah, that's their food supply. It's pretty damn freaking cool, man. Now we're getting close to the road, so it's gonna get busy. It is what it is. You can see this channel way here that the beavers have cut. Now that's actually go across the road, which scares me because on the other side of that road is another little pond and they like to go in there and eat, get food stuff. And um, the problem is the roads guys have caught on to them because they're making a small control dam over there, the beavers are. And the roads guys, yeah, they, they may trap these guys out. I hope not. I really hope not. But anyway, not much I can do. When you're paddling through swamps like this, that's a little bit slow going, uh, simply because the, uh, the amount of plant material, yeah, it just slows the hull down. But it's great though. Okay, I'm gonna put some trail cameras up just to see um, what wildlife are coming near the pond. So I'll pull in here for a bit. Okay, the idea here is this is the main deer trail here, and there's another one here, and there's a third one. Well, it's the same trail, it's heading up that way. So that camera that I just set up should capture any of the wild ones walking down these trails. I hope. We'll see. Come back later. So the deer walking on those trails, they're coming down here this way to get to the pond. You see, the issue is uh, simply that the lakes are so busy with people, these ponds are a lifeline to, these, uh, to the deer, the bear, the wolves, everybody else to get water, right? They just simply won't go to the lakes. I mean, it's too dangerous. So They'll come here. You can see one of their trails going around this tree right here. 
we'll go over the crest. This used to be a camp spot of mine. Okay, the beaver just came out of his lodge. He knows there's something going on on the pond because of my ripples. I'll keep my voice down. out here much longer. I don't want to piss him off. 